Hey everyone, my name is Wedge, and we've made it through the first week of Fate Reforge spoilers. We'll end the week with some game day promos, a sweet playmat, oh yeah, and a bunch of new spoilers for you to sink your teeth into. If, you know, you like the taste of cardboard, it's to each their own. Another day, another siege. Citadel Siege is too colorless and too white for an enchantment. As it enters the battlefield, choose cons your dragons. If you choose cons at the beginning of combat on your turn, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature you control. If you choose dragons at the beginning of combat on each opponent's turn, tap target creature that player controls. This could see standard play easily. Both of these abilities are relevant. Put this in something like Obzan midrange, get two counters every turn, thanks. Jeskai tokens? Buff stuff, sure. Tap your opponent's biggest threat? Sure. In a world where things like Pearl Lake Ancient and Siege Rhino exist, tapping down creatures before combat is not just hilarious, but surprisingly effective. While this may not be the most outwardly exciting siege, it could end up being the most playable. Not to mention its eternal playability in Commander, obviously. It's a white enchantment, what do you expect? Anyways, I think the siege might have a place in standard. Controlling any part of combat is powerful, just keep that in mind. Next up is Supplant Form, 4 colorless and 2 blue for an instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand. You put a token onto the battlefield, that's a copy of that creature. The obvious thing to say is that something like this is meant for commander. The card is incredibly versatile, only one color and at instant speed. You can really mess up someone's day by returning their commander to their hand and getting a copy for yourself. How is that not the funniest thing ever? Normally just returning something to their hand is annoying and a great sign of disrespect, but copying it too, you've basically just brought shame to their house and possibly extended family. The card's hysterical. Not meant for standard, I don't think, but honestly, that's fine with me. This thing is funny. Also, check out its game day top 8 promo version. Yeah, this is really pretty. I love these promos. Hey y'all, my name is Wedge, and welcome to the three-part series on how Mardu decided to steal the day spoiler-wise. Get ready for some warrior tribal hype. We'll start with Brutal Horde Chief. Four mana for a 3-3 orc warrior. Whenever a creature you control attacks, defending player loses one life and you gain one life. You can also pay three colorless and two hybrid red and white mana to have creatures your opponents control block this turn if able, and you choose how those creatures block. Well, this is it. This is the finisher that the warrior deck deserved and needed right now. The first ability, disgusting. Whenever a creature you control attacks, this is absolutely outrageous. The life swings even before combat happens are just unreal. The second ability, come on, it's just overkill. In a format where Courser of Crew Fix, Siege Rhino, and Sylvan Carry added, just jump in front of stuff, aggro decks have a hard time. Not anymore. This ability lets you decide what blocks where. Even better, if you have the means, you can probably kill anything you want. Controlling combat as the attacker is basically breaking the rules. The Horde Chief breaks all the rules and makes it look really good. Warrior Tribal slowly becoming standard viable. This is scary. Lastly, can we talk about how weak Mardu's Horde Chief has gotten? I mean, step it up, man. Look what came before you, you loser. Mardu Assault Chief is the next card that will force players to try and build Warrior Tribal. Two colorless and one black for a 3-2 human warrior. Whenever it attacks, put a 2-1 black warrior creature token out of the battlefield. It also has dash for three colorless and one black. This is an interesting card. Obviously it's going to see play in the Tribal deck I just mentioned, but it isn't bad for just a limited deck. Sure, 3-2 isn't the best thing ever, but it could be worse for a creature generating ability every turn. Plus a 2-1 is way better than a 1-1. The reach it gives you is pretty insane. While I don't think that this is going to be the most broken thing ever in standard, Mardu Obzan and Black Red aggro players will probably try to make it work at some point. I'm not sure they can resist the 2-1 spawn machine. Mardu Shadow Spear is our game day participation promo. One black mana for a 1-1 human warrior. Whenever it attacks, each opponent loses one life. It also has dash for two mana. Hey, aggro players, here's another goodie for you. Enjoy another efficient one drop with two good abilities. Granted, dash might not be all that useful in standard. In commander, it's the funniest thing ever. Dash it really quick and make everyone at the table angry. It sounds good to me. Its main purpose is to make standard aggro even more viable, especially those of you who are going deep on that warrior strategy we were just talking about. 
Flame Wake Phoenix is a playable one colorless and two red for a playable 2-2 Phoenix with playable flying in haste. It attacks each turn if able. It also has playable ferocious. At the beginning of combat on your turn, playable. If you control a creature with power 4 greater, you may pay one red. If you do playable, return Flame Wake Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. Playable. In case you didn't figure it out, this card is playable. I know, I was being too subtle. Anyways, Flame Wake Phoenix is amazing. Downright fantastic card. 3 mana for a 2-2 two -two with flying in haste? Sure. Has to attack each turn? Whatever. You bring it back for 1 red mana to the battlefield and all you need is a 4 power creature? Sure. It works for me. Flame Wake is the latest addition to the Teamer Mardu Jeskai midrange battle. Mark my words, Flame Wake should see standard play somewhere. The combination of haste, a cheap mana cost, and the recursion trigger should be enough. If not, then this standard is way more overpowered than I thought. If all else fails, Mono Red Devotion will just pair this up with Fanatic of Bogus. Boom! Match made in heaven. Thank goodness this is only a rare and not a mythic. This Phoenix is on fire. <laughs> yes! Sandstep Mastodon is our launch promo. 5 colorless and 2 green for a 5-5 five five elephant with reach and a bunch of tusks. When it enters the battlefield, bolster 5. Yeah, bolster 5. One lucky creature is about to get plus 5 plus 5. Say hello to the newest limited bomb, everyone. This guy is bonkers good. Past that, you have the interaction with Whip of Erebos, hysterical. Sage of Hours, yeah. I wish this could see significant standard play, but I have a feeling green-based creature decks are going to have enough of a problem fitting in everything they want as is. Regardless, great card. The thing's super funny. Crucible of the Spirit Dragon is our first rare land card, and I couldn't be less enthused. You can tap it to add one colorless mana to your mana pool. You can also pay one colorless and tap it to put a storage counter on it. Lastly, you can tap it and remove X storage counters from it to add X mana in any combination of colors to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to cast dragon spells or activate abilities of dragons. I'm trying to keep my composure, but it's difficult. You're telling me that the Crucible of the Spirit Dragon can't even be used to summon the Spirit Dragon? Ugin is a planeswalker, not a dragon creature. Come on, sure you can tap it for one colorless. whoop de doo great, no. Not great. I'm beyond upset about this. Ridiculous. The one thing that makes this card okay at all is the art. Take a close look. Yeah, hedrons. Hedrons everywhere. Things are about to get crazy on Tarkir. If the plane lives through this block, I'll be surprised. Everyone, hedrons. Having those around is, is never a good thing, ever. Two last things to talk about. First, the Biobox promo for Fate Reforged is Shamanic Revelation. The art is gorgeous, plus I really like the card, so kudos there. The second thing, and by far the most important slash amazing thing ever, here is the game day championship play match. Just stare at it for a second. Ugin has never looked so good. I'm going to go to 19 billion events. I need to win this play mat. If you're thinking about buying it, good luck. I can't imagine the price of this thing on the secondary market. This is one of the most beautiful playmats they've done in a while. I need it. You probably need it. We all need it. Go win game day. I thought that Wizards might take it easy because it's a Friday. Yeah, definitely not. We got to see our game day promos, the Ugin playmat, and a ton of great cards for the Warrior Tribal deck, along with a bunch of other stuff. If you aren't hyped for Fate Reforged yet, you either don't play Magic or you've been living under a rock this past week. Let me know which cards get you the most excited. I always love reading what you have to say. We'll be back this weekend with a two-part series and next Monday for more spoilers. Keep the hype going, friends. As always, subscribe below for the latest and most reliable Fate Reforged spoiler information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.